I believe at Emily Lizert we've been doing inclusive education for years and not because it's been a policy but because it's a belief that we have about what's right for kids. And the way we've organized our school with regards to the incredible leadership program that we offer, our school-wide assessment plan, our involvement in the flexibility enhancement project, uh, the work that we do uh, with students with, that are at risk, students with special needs, I believe we really take good care of our students and we ensure that Emmy Lizard is a very safe place to, to come. At Emily Lizert we have a population of about 2,000 students, about 250 are coded special needs. We also have about 400 ELL students that are identified. Emily Lizert is a very exciting school to, to be part of because it is so diverse. We have students from many different ethnic backgrounds and uh, who speak different languages who have different talents and interests. The Flexibility Enhancement Project has allowed us to be more creative in terms of, well, let's offer an intensive course and have a student write a diploma in, in November, have them write a diploma in April. And so just being more creative in, in what we can offer students. We get a lot of grade 10s coming in that have um, learned helplessness. They've struggled all the way through school and they've come to us knowing that they're gonna fail. They've spent nine years failing and this is just gonna be another year of failure. And so we spend you know, a good month um, showing them that with the right tools and the right strategies, they can be successful and they can learn and they can continue and do well in school. And then we try to group the kids into homogenized groups so they're at similar learning levels and uh, you know, it makes it a lot easier for us as we go along and for the kids. Um, to be together with that. We'll always end up with a group that, with the proper supports, can challenge a diploma. And then we'll have a regular k &E group that are solid k &E. And then we have had some years where we've actually had some kids that are lower than k &E and really need a non-graded curriculum. And we've actually created a class after school has started because those kids need need special attention and then we constantly monitor it and if we have a student that's in the K&E &E grouping that is proving that okay maybe we misplaced this student we can move them up to the diploma grouping just simply because we work together and because it's all timetabled at the same time it's easy for us to be able to switch students back and forth if need be. We all see the kids, um, so they see all of us throughout the year and that consistency for them is key, um, that they get to know us really, really well. We get to know them really, really well and learn what their needs are um, throughout the course of a year instead of only having this particular teacher for one semester and just as soon as you get used to them and by January you're moving on. We keep the kids for a full year and just that consistency really allows us to build those kinds of relationships with the students that is really, really effective with with getting those kids completing their programming at the high school level. Open up your rocket animation. Kids that have learned helplessness that come in in grade 10 that nobody ever thought they could write an essay or, or finish high school. They come in in a K&E class from Dash 4 and then in three years walk out with a diploma and shake our hands and, and say thank you very much and then you see them on the street and that's, you can't put a price on that. The teachers offer a lot of support and I really like the fact that they offer me certain courses that I can take so I can earn uh, higher goals. We opened an academic support centre. So if a student needs an accommodation such as a reader for an assessment, then the academic support centre will provide that type of um, accommodation and that also includes things like the extra time they may need to use a computer um, and so that's all available to students as well. Academic Support Centre is open four blocks a day all day long. We have students that are coded special needs, coded ELL, we have regular students that come into academic support, students 
can come down spontaneously. Teachers can call and book students in. But if this program wasn't here, I think that a lot of the students would fall through the cracks. They wouldn't have that support. They might not complete high school. So I think that this is a great support for students, especially at this point in, at high school when it really, really counts. Just because they need a little help getting through high school and through that post-secondary institution, it doesn't mean that they wouldn't be fantastic after they got their degrees, you know, at, at that job. Yeah, I do better. Yeah. Just because I take my time and I do get extra time to work on it. And just take my time slowly. Well, it just gives me an isolated space. I get distracted very easily with anyone around me and it's like, I like to watch what they're doing instead of what I'm doing and I just don't accomplish anything. I usually need extra time with English and social with usually um, uh, with those two courses. The mathematics, I, I'm good, but I still prefer extra time because I'm the type of person who takes time on exams and I get when I get um, stuck with a question, I don't just move on, I just struggle with it for a while. I probably wouldn't be getting 80s in my courses, I'd probably be getting more like 60s. My main job is to make sure that any student uh, in the school um, that has special needs is getting what they need to be as successful as possible. We have approximately 160 students with individual program plans. So those are the majority of the time I spend with are with those students. We have many educational assistants that support whole classes as well as um, individual or small groups of students. Our EAs have tremendous gifts and talents and I want them to you know, be exposed to as many students as possible. It's better for the students as well because as they move into adulthood they're going to be meeting different adults every day and so they need to have different relationships and learn how to work with different personalities and it also helps them practice their self-advocacy skills. The Interactions program is uh, students with uh, autism. We have about 14 students in that program, including five educational assistants and a teacher as well. They come um, with uh, varying degrees of uh, autism, and some of our students are actually integrated for some of their courses. Good job. Airplane. Airplane. Gee. Amy is a student with uh, autism. She came to us from one of her feeder junior highs. She started off with us on a part-time basis. So she was part-time in homebound instruction and then part-time taking options with us. She is not in the interactions program. The parents wanted their daughter to be fully integrated and have that high school experience. So she goes to a foods classroom. She's in an English class. She's in an art class. And you know, that, that makes me very proud to be the principal of Emily Lizard to show that, that we also have students with special needs that can enjoy and participate in so many aspects of high school life. I work with her in art and I work with her in cosmetology. So right now we're working on um, a means of, of communication for her, like through a tablet. Her speech is limited, however her understanding is quite high. Uh, she's a tremendous artist and we would never have known that unless you know we had spoken to her parents and seen what Amy can do art. Um, it makes me smile when the educational assistant said, looks at uh, Amy's sketchbook and her sketchbook and goes, I can't figure out whose is whose because Amy is such a tremendous artist. So It's just such a warm feeling to know that she's safe in that classroom, she knows she's safe in that classroom. She's really quite confident in her own way because she's so bouncy in a good way, like in a happy way. Amy, high five, Miss Adela. Awesome. Good job, Amy. Dad has been extremely supportive and happy with the programming for Amy. He was asking if Amy could stay a fourth year. It's the best place for her, so Amy's going to come back for a fourth year and take more courses and uh, be involved more in the school. We've had an exciting journey in assessment at our school. Um, for the last 10 or 20 years, there's been some really exciting research coming out about assessment in education and we at Emily Lazard have challenged ourselves with taking those ideas and seeing how we can apply them and make them work at our school. 
We took our staff through a process that's been now a four-year process around uh, looking at those practices that distort achievement, uh, looking at our summative assessment practices, and now for the last two years we've been focusing on assessment for learning. So things like uh, engaging students in classroom discussions, the questioning techniques, the self-assessment and peer assessment, uh, sharing and stating learner outcomes with students. So we've spent a lot of time um, on those pieces as well over the last two years and we have found that it's made such a substantial difference in, in students being successful in their courses. It's been very exciting to see teachers take risks and take chances with trying something new. This is a very different way of looking at things and so it's a different way to talk to students about assessments, it's a different way to talk to students about why are we doing this and how are you going to be marked and so teachers have been willing to to try something new and then it's just opened up a world of possibilities. Because when we talk about inclusion we're talking about all kids. At Emmy Lazert, we have an inclusive culture. Uh, students who would have normally been in segregated programs, special needs programs, segregated from the rest of the population are now being uh, included in the regular classrooms, included in regular activities, included with the rest of the students in the school. They are succeeding, they are moving on to post-secondary, it's just wonderful. They have that opportunity, whereas maybe they wouldn't have had it before. You know, one size doesn't fit all for students. And so we have to look at these students individually and see how we can help them reach their full potential. And being able to have that flexibility to be able to program for them differently. Safety rule for safety never takes a holiday. That's why you gotta make sure you remove the plug before you start. There's this particular student, Harley, in, uh, in there, and he is a higher functioning student with autism in the fact that his vocabulary is amazing. He's got the most incredible sense of humor. He's just an amazing kid. And he's a really nice guy. You can get along with him very easily. And we walk around the halls, like putting posters up for different events. Um, we could be sorting something from school wear to papers. It doesn't matter. My goal for Harley, because of the age that he is, was to uh, give him experiences if he was in a working situation. So then we, you know, met with the teacher and the EA and the interaction, how the, could this, what could this look like and what supports does Harley need to be successful and one of the things he wanted to try was working in the cafeteria um, because he's interested in, in gaining more employable skills that he can use outside of high school. So we talked with our cafeteria staff and they were wonderful. They were excited to have somebody who was in, interested in, and excited about working in the cafeteria. My student counselor called me in the office one day and she said, how would you like to work in the cafeteria? I said, fantastic. This is the second year I've had Harley in my class. Um, we make a special program for Harley. Harley is an exceptional student. He um, has some very good abilities and he will work well in the kitchen. Put them on the edges so they don't dry out. Too much cheese falls off if it's being baked in the oven. He maintains the um, stock in the coolers. He is the pizza king. He does the burgers now. And he is, I just trained him like two weeks ago to do the slicer. And he does it better than I have kids that are in here every day in commercial foods that are not special needs kids. It's important that he learns some life skills from, from all of us. Because you know what? He's going to be part of our society. And if he doesn't have anything to take out of here, we didn't really do our job. He's helping hang posters and putting up information and he's part of the discussions for planning and what do you need and he adds so much to it and he feels so valued that it's, he actually feels bad when he thinks that he may not be part of it because something, you know, maybe his attention's needed elsewhere in her interaction. He's like, no. I can't go on that field trip with you guys. I am needed in leadership that day. Or it is pizza day. I am the pizza king. I'm sorry I can't go with you guys, I have responsibilities in the cafeteria so it's been such a great learning experience for everybody and he's just such a valued uh, member of the school. He's also involved in our leadership program and setting up different activities throughout the school. 
We have an incredible leadership program. When you look at our composition of students that are in leadership, we've got international baccalaureate students. We have students with autism in that program. It's very multicultural. It just really is a true representation of what Emmy Lazard is all about. There's so much to do here and like all the staff and everything, the students, everyone's really welcoming and also I we're really diverse. I love the atmosphere here and I feel like I'm a part of the school. I mean Lizard's a good school because it brings in kids with disabilities and abilities and kids that with different cultures and every kind of person that you can imagine. Um, a cultural day. It's called Taste of Lazert. And we have students from a variety of ethnic backgrounds that bring ethnic food and we have performances. It's called, it's called Mensa. We're all inclusive when it comes to culture. And here's a chance for us to celebrate as a school your culture. Can't get anything better than this. And what it is, is for our Amy Lazert students to show off their culture, their food, their entertainment. It's a time for them to celebrate where they're from and to celebrate to their friends and show their friends. They work really hard. I have kids coming after school in my room every single day practicing their dancing. And these kids, you can just see today, they walk around a little taller and with, you know, their chests kind of puffed out with their flags and their traditional dress and they're just so proud to show it off and answer questions and tell us about the culture. And it's a true testament of how we are so successful at really existing together as one family. Well, this is the Students' Union Room or Student Leadership Room and this is the room where everything happens for the school events for student activities. Basically what they do is they will um, engage the rest of the student body around that activity. Then we have the leadership program and so those students, um, Students Union advertises the volunteer commitments or volunteer activities that students can be part of and so our leadership students quite often will help out Students Union with that and then also the leadership students are invited to create their own events as well. Students can take it as a CTS module so they can get credit for it. My first year I only had 37 students enrolled in leadership. My second year I had 110 registered in leadership. Third year I had 212 in leadership and this is year four with 305 in leadership. Anybody can contribute in, in some way in order for them to feel like they um, are a valuable part of the Emmy Lizard community, everybody has something to offer. There's no special requirements. I think if you're going to be in leadership, get involved with all the activities going on and that's really the part of leadership. Right, 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 left, left. We're making a music video and it's just about the diversity here that exists at Lizard. We um, definitely have cultures that are diverse and I've been trying to push the students beyond just cultural diversity. And you know, when we talk about diversity, there's diversity in ability, there's diversity in interests. So it's really about the community building, about the relationships, and that's the basis behind the leadership program. I have a phenomenal staff here because they have to work really hard. Because you know, it, it's, it's Northeast Edmonton, students come with a lot of different issues and my staff are empathic, they're so caring, they let counselors know when there's students that have issues, uh, students talk to different staff members and so I feel that we really have a great connection uh, with our students so that students aren't falling through the cracks. It is us taking care of all of the kids and meeting whatever needs they bring to the school. And that is really complex. It is really challenging because there are a million different uh, needs out there for us to try to address, but I think that that is our job. 
We take care of all of the kids that come through our door and we own them and we, uh, we're relentless with them and we see them through all the way to the end. There you go. Have a good day. I know that when they leave us that they're going to be okay. Because we've provided them with the skills that are going to be transferable for them in life. That they're going to be able to apply those skills to other situations in life and that they're going to do well. It's fantastic. This is where excellence happens. To learn more about what Edmonton Public Schools is doing to support inclusion, visit us online at epsb.ca backslash inclusive learning.